It was a warm, sleepy afternoon on the Pacific island of Rummy Tummy. And at the end of a long and tiring journey, the black pig lay at anchor in the bay. High on the poop deck, Captain Pugwash was peacefully asleep in his hammock. Or rather, he was pretending to be peacefully asleep. Pretending because at the other end of the ship, he had noticed that his crew were behaving in an exceedingly suspicious manner. For one thing, they were awake instead of having their afternoon snooze. And the fact that Tom the cabin boy was with them made the captain even more worried. Now, best mates, said the mate, we must make sure all our preparations are in order. One barrel of rub from the ship's stores, Pirate Barnabas. One barrel it is, master mate. Candles from the armory, Pirate Willie. Plenty of candles, master mate. See, I've got them already. And you're away sure to get the rest, Tom. Aye, aye, master mate. Watch it, Tom, lad. We don't know this island. Aye, the islanders might decide to gobble you up. Nonsense. I'll be all right. And in spite of their warnings, Tom climbed down into the dinghy. Soon he was rowing to the shore of Rummy Tummy Island. And two hours later, safe and sound, and with a heavy boatload, he was on his way back. Well, Dad Tom. Shh, master mate, the captain will hear. Nonsense, Barnabas. He doesn't suspect a thing. But Barnabas was right. The captain was suspicious. Indeed, when he climbed into bed that night, he kept all his clothes on. At first, all was quiet on board the black pig. Then, as eight bells struck for midnight... Time to get up, master mate. Rise and shine, pirate Barnabas. Wakey, wakey, pirate Willie. The pirates jumped straight out of their beds and gathered round the mess table to enjoy their carefully prepared midnight feast. My goodness, you've done us proud this time, Tom, said the mate as they surveyed the table. It was spread with all sorts of tasty foods and delicious island fruits and vegetables. <laughs> and there's plenty of it, too, said Willie happily. Lucky we didn't ask the captain, said Barnabas. He'd have eaten a lot, and all by himself, too. <laughs> Indeed, Pirate Barnabas, said a voice from the door. Oh, no! Oh, dear! Oh, my! And there, as the pirates turned in confusion and surprise, stood their captain, looking particularly pleased with himself. Plundering porpoises, he cried. I suppose I ought to put you all in irons, <laughs> or maybe make you write out 100 times we must not have midnight feasts on board ship. But no, I feel unusually kind today, so instead of punishing you, I shall join you. B-b-b-b-b-b-b, cried the mate anxiously. Rum, please, Tom. Ah, oh, thank you. But Pugwash was already happily tucking in. And for the pirates, there was nothing to do but make the best of it. Mm. <laughs> oh, mm, mm. After all, he was their captain. Good health. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Soon, everybody was eating and pouring out drinks and proposing toasts. And nobody noticed that some more uninvited guests were coming to the midnight feast. Guests whose ship had dropped anchor close by that evening under cover of darkness, and who were now scrambling up the side of the black pig. They were the most unwelcome guests of all. Cutthroat Jake and his desperate band of bloodthirsty buccaneers. Captain Pugwash had just helped himself to a second scrumptious sandwich when suddenly... Ha! Cutthroat Jake and his gang rushed in and surrounded the pirates. Having a midnight feast, eh? roared Jake. I never thought of asking us to join you. Well, we're here now, you greedy old ruffian, and we wouldn't dream of not asking you to join us. 
tied up you'll be, where you can watch us finishing off your fancy goodies. And after that, it'll be the plank for the lolly so the sharks can have their midnight feast too. <laughs> and very soon, Jake had Captain Pugwash and the mate and Barnabas and Willie and Tom all tied together back to back and dumped on the mess table so that they could all see their captors hungrily gobbling up all the food in sight. Ha, ha, ha! What's the matter, Captain, me old mate? Still hungry? And so, for the third time that night, a merry party was underway on board the Black Pig. So merry that again nobody noticed that yet more uninvited guests were on their way. Two great canoes had approached silently from the island, and the islanders who came in them were now silently scrambling up the sides of the Black Pig. Suddenly, the forecastle was filled with leaping, yelling figures who seized Jake and his crew. Uh, what's all this, then? Help! They untied Pugwash and the mate and Barnabas and Willie and Tom and carried them all out, struggling and kicking, up onto the deck, down over the side of the ship and into the two great canoes in which they were swiftly propelled towards the beach. The whole attack had happened so suddenly that at first the pirates were stunned. Only Tom didn't seem to be particularly surprised at the turn of events. Then Barnabas spoke. If you ask me, messmates, he said, the real midnight feast is taking place on shore tonight. And you know what could be on the menu? Pirate pie and chips. Uh, coddling catfish, they can't cried the captain. Can't they just, muttered the mate. Tom didn't say anything, but it looked as though Barnabas was right. Up on the beach, hundreds of islanders were gathering round a big fire with a large cooking pot on it. <laughs> Let's hope they cook Jake first, whispered Pugwash. Soon, the whole party was set ashore on the beach. Maybe he'll give them such indigestion that they won't fancy any more, said the captain. But Jake and his men were led away to a large hut some distance off, whereas Pugwash and his crew were taken up to a high throne on which what looked like the king of the island was sitting. When they got there, wreaths of flowers were placed round their necks. Godish! That's what that is, grunted Barnabas. And Captain Pugwash became so terrified that he cried, Let us go at once, I say. I demand to see the British consul. I, I... But the king interrupted him with a broad smile. My dear captain, he said, what on earth is troubling you? There's no need to look so anxious. It's like this. When I met your cabin boy Tom on the island this afternoon, he told me that a midnight feast was planned for this evening, and I thought what fun it would be to prepare a really splendid banquet for you here on the island as a surprise. And that is what we've done. I'm so sorry that we had to board your ship and bring you back here in such a rude manner. But the arrival of that ruffian Jake who, your cabin boy tells me, is one of the vilest villains afloat, left me no choice. Never fear. I shall keep them under... ...night, and hand them over to the proper authorities in the morning. And now, let us begin our feast. But, Tom, how did you know they weren't going to eat us? Learned it at school, Master Maid. Nobody's been eaten hereabouts for thousands of years. And so, as Jake and his crew crouched miserably in their prison hut, cursing and swearing, and not having the slightest idea of what was going to happen to them, Captain Pugwash and the mate and Barnabas and William and Tom oh, the yes. cabin boy uh -huh. settled down to the mm -hmm. most delicious oh, dinner they had oh, ever eaten in their there. lives. Goodness me, remarked the king. What a fearful noise your enemies are making. For by now, the yelling and cursing from Jake and his crew could be heard all over the island. I shouldn't worry too much about them, 
said Captain Pugwash happily. They have probably got some extraordinary idea that they're being kept in store specially for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs>